the armed conflicts that Americans have fought, none was bloodier or more savage than the Civil War Battle of Gettysburg. Now, more than a century later, chilling ghost stories and strange phenomena caught on tape add up to one eerie conclusion. Did it again. Did you, you see that? Yeah, I did. Those who died at Gettysburg may still haunt that battleground. That's too wild. Oh, it got again! Cross this threshold to places of mystery. Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Realistic Civil War reenactments have made this national park a popular tourist destination. But in the first week of July, 1863, it was the site of genuine carnage. Gettysburg, if they drilled here, they wouldn't find oil. They'd find blood. I don't know how many thousands of gallons that have drained into the soil. It's just everywhere. Dave Oster, director of the International Ghost Hunters Society, holds an annual conference in Gettysburg. We originally came to Gettysburg because we knew that whenever a large number of people died in a relatively short period of time, that there's a lot of unresolved issues, unfinished business among those that died, and they would remain behind until they were finished. And whenever you have a war, you really notice it. Ghost hunters aren't the only ones interested in the spiritual world of this battlefield. Author and historian Mark Nesbitt has spent the last 25 years living and working here. He is now one of the leading authors on Gettysburg with over 11 published books. Gettysburg to me is a growing thing. It's becoming more and more of kind of a mystical place. Um, sure, there was a terrible battle that was fought here, the worst on the North American continent. But it's, it's part of our myth, our American myth, in that it virtually destroyed on this continent the biblical scourge of slavery. Victory came at a terrible price. The Battle of Gettysburg took just three days to fight, but in those three days, nearly 51,000 men and boys ended up missing, wounded, or dead. The horrors of Gettysburg were well documented. Photographs taken in the aftermath of the battle graphically depict images of the dead. Row upon row of bodies lined the fields and streets. Many were buried where they fell. But there are some who feel that the soldiers who died in combat were the lucky ones. Ah! Wounded survivors taken to the makeshift field hospitals faced a living hell. Amputation was the order of the day. And then there were those unfortunate souls who with just a single shot became the walking dead. If you were hit in the head by that soft lid mini ball, sometimes it didn't kill you. And they had areas on battlefields that they roped off. And these poor fellas who one minute were full of patriotism, the next minute just virtually nobodies, wandered around, bumped into the ropes, perhaps still marching as they had just moments before they lost consciousness. Finally until they bled to death and then they would take them off and bury them. The mix of morbid fascination and historical reverence is a lure too powerful to resist. For Americans, of course, it's, kind of, it's almost like a rite of passage. We have, you know, high school classes memorizing the Gettysburg Address and then visiting this site where Lincoln delivered the Gettysburg Address. But with the advent of the ghostly aspect of it, I think people are coming here for a different reason. That ghostly aspect includes frightening apparitions and strange phenomena that defy explanation. Do you, you see that? Yeah, I did. When I tell people what I do, I'm a ghost hunter, most laugh and say, sure, right. And then a few minutes later, they'll uh, come up to me and tell me a story. Everybody has a story. Stories of Gettysburg's haunted battlefields and buildings are not new. They reach back nearly 150 years. The numerous eyewitness accounts of contact with ghosts of fallen soldiers are too similar in detail and frequency to be dismissed. One paranormal epicenter is Pennsylvania Hall on the Gettysburg College campus. It used to be called Old Dorm. During and after the battle, Old Dorm was used as a field hospital. Here, hundreds, perhaps thousands of men suffered through crude and hasty surgeries. It is said the blood of Confederate and Union soldiers literally flowed through the halls. 
The Gettysburg College campus is rife with stories and legends of paranormal activity. But the scariest tale of all belongs to Old Dorm. Two administrators were working late one night on the fourth floor, which is where their offices were. It was about 11 o'clock. They were tired, decided it's time to go. Got in the elevator, uh, pushed the button for the first floor, which is where the exit was. What happened next was like being dropped through a tear in the fabric of time. As the elevator descended, it passed the second and first floors, finally stopping at the basement level. When the doors opened, the two women were horrified by what they saw. When the doors opened on a scene uh, out of time and reason. It opened on a hospital, a Civil War hospital. There were men in, in corners moaning, groaning, trying to staunch the blood from their wounds, waiting for an operation. The surgeon was already working on someone, and apparently he looked up, recognized the ladies, and motioned for them to come in and help. The ladies were punching frantically at the buttons, trying to get out of this frozen moment in time. Finally, the doors closed. The women were so shaken, they instinctively rushed to the office of Tim and Lynn, the director of safety and security operations for Gettysburg College. What they told Officer Lynn smacked of a practical joke. Or did it? They had a look that something was wrong. Quite frankly, I expected to go over and find either a fraternity prank or... I wasn't sure what to find, but I was thinking it was going to be a fraternity prank or something along that line. Went back to Penn Hall. It was empty and there was nothing... The mechanism of the elevator was fine. We checked the elevator, checked the basement completely. Given the, the scene that they described with the soldiers and the surgery and all the stuff going on, there's no way a prank could have been in there and out of there in the time from they reported to us till we walked across the street and found it. Officer Lynn knew these women well and took their report seriously. Their story doesn't change. It never did change any time we ever talked about it. And a lot of times you talk to people that maybe aren't sincere. The facts sometimes waver. They were pretty steadfast in what they said they saw and what they felt they saw. Dr. Charles Emmons is a professor of sociology at Gettysburg College, an expert on human behavior. Dr. Emmons believes that the actions of the two women lend credibility to their story. They didn't want to talk about it later. So it's not that they made it up, it's that they were afraid to talk about it. Why would they make it up and then refuse to talk about it? No single explanation can cover the variety of ghost stories that emanate from Gettysburg. When we come back, a guilt-ridden soldier begs forgiveness from beyond the grave. It is said that many of the fields, barns, and structures in Gettysburg are haunted. Most of the old buildings that were standing at the time of the battle have been restored to their original form. One of the loveliest, but perhaps the most haunted, is the Farnsworth House. Today it is such a popular bed and breakfast that travelers must book a room in advance. But the history of this fine Pennsylvania home is checkered with stories of tragedy and sadness. The battle itself scarred the south wall of the house with more than 100 bullet holes. The Farnsworth house is now a family-run business. Patty O'Day is one of the owner's daughters. In the basement, she puts on a Civil War mourning theater for her guests. It is here that Patty and her cast of narrators recount the history of Gettysburg and its many ghost stories. Perhaps one of the saddest chapters in the old home's past revolves around the only civilian casualty of the entire Gettysburg battle. It seems that Mary Virginia Wade, more commonly known as Jenny Wade, was not an intentional target. However, living directly across from the Farnsworth house put her quite literally in the wrong place at the wrong time. The only reason really why she was in the house, actually, and not in the cellar, is because she was tending her sister had just had a baby and she was helping out. She was also baking bread to feed the soldiers. A three-story structure the Farnsworth house was used as high ground by sharpshooters during the battle. From the house's garret, rebel soldiers had a clear shot at their adversaries. 
I don't know exactly what this, what this fellow was thinking, but he was firing at Union soldiers that were in the yard in the Jenny Wade house. So, of course, a lot of those bullets would be stray bullets. Tragically, one of the bullets pierced the house's wooden front door and struck Jenny in the back. Her young life was snuffed out instantly. It is now commonly believed that the spirits of both Jenny and her killer stalk the hallways and rooms of the Farnsworth house. At night, one can hear Jenny asking, why? While the forlorn soldier begs forgiveness. Those aren't the only ghosts at the Farnsworth house. It seems that restless spirits frequent every floor. One of Patty's theater narrators experienced a visit. Get ready for the shows and um, she was actually seated in a chair and she just sort of closed her eyes she opened them and it was just like the whole room was entirely blank it was no longer the theater at all the seats were gone and she saw three soldiers and one seemed to be in charge and he was ordering these two other confederate soldiers to pick up this this long box that was on the floor and he wanted them to go up into another level of the house and the experience for her just lasted a few seconds, you know, and then it just flashed back and the theater, everything that, you know, that's down in the cellar now reappeared. Although Patty speaks openly about the strange goings on at the Farnsworth house, she discourages identifying it as haunted. She prefers the term rich with history. But people who go to Gettysburg and stay in this wonderful old bed and breakfast will be duly warned. Sometimes if people are sensitive, we suggest maybe that they stay maybe even someplace else or in, our, in a newer section of the house, you know, so they're not really bombarded. Somebody from the Jenny Wade room packed up and left because they had someone in the middle of the night ran their hands or down her face while she was, you know, just partially awake, so, and that, that frightened her. There's just a, a lot of different stories about the house. And there's, there, there's a lot of pain here, and there's, you know, there's a lot of things that still remain that, you know, can't be explained. Second-hand accounts of ghosts and other paranormal encounters abound in Gettysburg. But are these just ghost stories and nothing more? In an effort to substantiate proof of paranormal activity, Mark Nesbitt and the International Ghost Hunter Society have spent thousands of hours collecting photographic and audio anomalies to back up their claims. Yet the strongest independent evidence may have been captured by video cameras. Here goes one. When we come back, startling images caught on tape. Did you see that? Yeah, I did. It, this is popping like crazy over here. Right Rich and detailed history of alleged hauntings in Gettysburg make it a natural meeting place for investigators of the paranormal. The International Ghost Hunter Society holds their annual conference here. When the speeches are over, they make it a practice to venture out into the fields and other haunted places. Rick Fisher is the founder of the Pennsylvania Ghost Hunter Society. He prefers to approach paranormal investigations on a technical rather than spiritual level. A ghost hunter looks for evidence of uh, possible proof that life goes on. And uh, we believe that it does. We find instruments that uh, we can detect uh, anomalies and things like that that we believe to be spirits of the dead. Gettysburg is uh, very haunted because of the tragedy that occurred here during the Civil War. And it's not uncommon to go on any parts of the battlefield and uh, get strange photographs, experience equipment failure, things like that. Fisher claims that recent developments in consumer technology, such as the digital camera and the voice recorder, have finally provided the average ghost hunter with equipment capable of recording visual and auditory anomalies. Science tells us every human emits electromagnetic fields. When we die, the physical body dies, but the soul, the spirit, still remains behind and this is energy energy cannot be destroyed only transformed this is a digital camera these are great for filming paranormal activity it uses a computer chip so it's basically electromagnetic in origin which we know the spirits are electromagnetic in origin and we believe that corresponds with that 
Mark Nesbitt has been recording electromagnetic phenomena in and around Gettysburg for years. Some of his most startling documentation of ghostly entities has been recorded on digital tape, a process referred to as EVP. EVP is uh, electronic voice phenomenon. Approximately 60% of all the paranormal experiences are auditory. Perhaps it's easier for the energies to communicate on an auditory level with the electromagnetism and the electricity in your brain. Maybe we're antennas. The thing that gives me the so-called willies is the EVP. When you can actually hear someone and hear voices uh, and communicate and hear them answer your questions, to me that's, that's a little scary. And then there are the thousands of photographic oddities, most commonly referred to as orbs, that consistently appear in the camera viewfinders, videotapes and photographs of professional and amateur ghost hunters. Mark Nesbitt invited our crew along on a ghost hunting expedition in, of all places, the attic of his office. Now, what's happening here is that we've been taking pictures off in that direction, okay? And wouldn't it be great for you to get some of those things floating around up there? The results were startling. All right, ready? I'll turn this up to... Michael, I saw two to the left of you. That's exactly what I saw. Did you Get really? Out. I swear, I thought it was something. Yeah. You, does he have a camera in his hand? I. I saw if I have a camcorder. Yeah. Did it again. Yeah. Just saw it. Did it again. Yeah. That is too freaky. Did it again. Did you, you see that? Yeah, I did. It, it, this is popping like, like crazy over here. Right. We've slowed down the tape to take a closer look at these flashes. Notice that they could not have been projected from one single location, since the flashes appeared simultaneously in the viewfinders of two separate cameras. That seems to rule out technical problems as a possible source. It's ice cold right here. It's ice cold right here. Oh, there, where right again? Yeah, right where you said it was ice cold. Yep. You can, I can feel it. It's oh, that's like, too mild. It's like Evidence of ghosts or not, what was witnessed in the attic of Mark Nesbitt's office was very unusual, to say the least. We later found out that Mark's office was in a building occupied by Confederate sharpshooters during the Battle of Gettysburg. Many of those soldiers died in his attic. Later that night, our crew joined Dave Oster and Rick Fisher for a traditional ghost hunt in a Civil War cemetery. And what I'm looking for is any type of, of white light, normally the orbs of light are above, around, some of the tombstones, and I show up like a sphere. Okay, there's one here, I can feel it. I don't see anything yet. Okay, we got one. Just to the right, right over here. The orb right there, and the, the digital technology is fantastic because it eliminates developing and processing flaws. Remember, the spirits are electromagnetic in nature. A digital camera can record the presence because they, they're electromagnetic. I mean, they're both working on the same format. Oh my goodness, we're getting them. They're here, just right here, the big one here, some up there, like a whole bunch of small ones coming out around it. The results we got were intriguing, and Rick Fisher's digital camera provided us with even more pieces of the paranormal puzzle. Rick Fisher set up a camera upstairs in one of the evenings he spent here in my office and he just let it run for an hour and walked away about a uh, 30 seconds left in the tape you see two of these orbs one going from the bottom right corner up towards the upper left hand corner and another one right after it and in a whisper you can hear a voice say catch me we took the video Mark just described and slowed it down to half its normal speed. In addition, we boosted the audio to four times its normal setting. Watch, listen, and decide for yourself. That's, to my knowledge, the first time that someone has combined uh, video with EVP. So what are the orbs in these photographs? 
And what are the strange murmurings that ghost hunters like Nesbitt and Fisher capture on digital audio tapes? Are they the work of overactive imaginations, searching for some guarantee that life exists after death? Or are they something from beyond the grave that we are just beginning to understand? Why should this be a trivialized phenomenon when it, it may change our whole view of the universe and the nature of human beings? It is something truly amazing and that it's just way beyond our ability to comprehend it. The Battle of Gettysburg proved to be a catalyst for ending slavery in this country. It also spawned one of the most beautiful documents of all time. President Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg Address spoke of a new birth of freedom, for the people shall not perish from the earth. But what are the scores who perished on both sides of the conflict? Why do the spirits of fallen soldiers seem to linger in Gettysburg? Is it true old soldiers never die, they just fade away? Soldiers would say from opposite sides, see in hell, Johnny. Johnny Reb, see in hell, Billy, Billy Yank. They believed that they were doing something horrible and sinful by killing one another here. And perhaps there still is that fear of judgment. And maybe that's why they cling to this place called Gettysburg. <laughs>